Welcome in. It's the Positively Petland Show, AM 800 KXIC, Iowa City. I'm Jay Caper. We have Ron Salzard here from Petland of Iowa City, talking pets as we always do right around this time. If you're listening in on the radio, it's 9 in the 9 o'clock hour on Sunday, or you're listening whenever you are on our podcast page. We appreciate it. However, you're listening to us here on KXIC. Always a lot of fun to talk about our furry friends, our scaled friends, our feathered friends, and have some fun learning a little bit about more about those creatures and why we love them so much. We have Big Voice Guy here for the Amazing Pet Story of the Week. We're ready to go with that. Quite a celebrity. He is a celebrity. And we also have a Breed of the Week we're going to talk about, the Sheltie. Just picture Lassie and shrink her. Right? Is that a good analogy? Yeah, Lassie's a collie. Yeah. And then uh, the Shelties, there is lineage more recently with collies than in the past. It's an interesting history on, on the Shetland sheepdog. Uh, so you hit Lassie with a shrink ray. Yeah. <laughs> and then that's, that's your Sheltie. And then we're going to talk. There's a movie on that, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, it? maybe. And then what's the other part, thing we're going to talk about? We're going to talk about periodontal disease. Okay. It's, we're gonna, is this going to be one of those where you get scared and go oh my gosh i gotta do and then go oh this is actually fairly easy and there's some very simple solutions just make sure you employ them and i've seen some numbers that are kind of staggering about the amount of dogs that uh, have the early on stages of periodontal disease right and we'll talk about what are some of the those key things that you can look for that are really easy to find and go oh i got an issue now let me make sure i do the right things here and you're going to find out most dogs we're are showing signs right now. Okay. And then we're also going to talk about Royal Canin. And it's going to kind of tie into that because the fact is they craft their food in different shapes, specifically for different breeds even. So they, the way that that kibble is shaped is made for certain types of breeds so that they can digest it. And also when they're chewing it, it helps to clean their teeth. So it's kind of an interesting food there. Uh, they're taking it all the way to the biting process of not only what's in the food, but how the food is created the texture, the crunchiness of it, and all that. So that's going to be kind of interesting to hear how they do that with Royal Canin. So we've got all that to get to here on a very busy show. We always have lots of great local information here on KXIC and a great local store in Petland of Iowa City. And as uh, I get ready for the amazing story, tell us a little bit about your store, Ron. We're Petland of Iowa City. Are you looking for a new pet? Uh, Come on in, and we're going to expose you to if it's a puppy, it's a kitten, it's a, a reptile, it's a fish, it's a small animal, a bunny, whatever that is, we've got those in our store so you can, you know, hey, is this the right pet? Do you already have a pet? We're all about the supplies. I have a very unique selection in our store, and I encourage you to ask us questions because we can then point out products that you probably wouldn't pick up but are outstandingly great. Wendy and I are going to trade shows like five times a year looking for these really good products that actually do what they're supposed to do and help you help your pet even more. Um, you can always come in, take advantage of our $5 nail trims, no appointments necessary. Just bring those vaccination records in and we'll get a copy and put them on file. And you just then come on in and get it done. It's really easy, $5 nail trims. And then we have all of our dog food and cat food is on a buy 10, get one free. That's a phenomenal deal because it's all competitively priced. Plus, it's like getting another 10% off every time you buy one because you're going to get handed a free bag. Oh, how about that? It's Good a party. Day. You got to love that. You got to love it. Uh, yeah, and you can't beat a $5 nail trim. That's mm -hmm. uh, right there on the window, too. All right, so our amazing pet story of the week. Oh, my goodness. He's wearing a big Russian hat. Yikes. A big winter hat. Why it's is he wearing that? I have no idea. Oh, he just handed me the sheet. It's about a man who fell into a Russian ice hole. And now he's marching out of the studio. Interesting. Why is he dressed? <laughs> he's uh, marching. He's doing that stiff-legged walk. Yeah, with those big black boots on too. The big is it called a babushka? The big hat? I don't even. I'm know. not sure what that's called, but it's big and furry, and it's on his head, and it's not a pet. Give it's Yeltsin a, a call. Find yes, out. A Russian. A man was saved from a retiree who fell into a Russian ice hole. How about this story? Anatoly Chemenko, good Russian name there, was in Chulum, Russia, when he fell into an ice hole. He was a hunter. Uh, he had a padded jacket and heavy boots, and the 77-year-old was able to pull off one shoe, but he couldn't get to—he he couldn't get himself completely out of the water. His dog, uh, his little dog Dick, was his name, started barking for help, and thankfully, 57-year-old Vladimir Karablin, also a hunter, heard the pleas and ran for help, and I was able to pull this man from the shore and 
Well, I don't even know. I wonder what kind of dog that is. Is Siberian? Uh, that's an interesting look there. He's got yeah, the I've tail. Yeah, I watched some documentaries on dogs in Russia, and they do some crazy mixing over there, but they're mixing for hunting purposes, and so they're really in the formative stage, and that, that breed right there that you're looking at looks like in the formative stage. I yeah. don't recognize any specific breed in that interesting well and here's something interesting too that's big voice guy's hat the guy who's wearing it right there there it is a big furry russian hat that he was wearing interesting all right well that's where he got the idea i think so the amazing pet story of the week it is about the little dog that helped save a a hunter out in the wild and we see that uh, quite often here especially when people are out in nature whether fishing or hunting sometimes things happen and uh, it's nice always nice to have a barking dog to be able to help spread the word that you are in trouble yeah. it's uh just about time to wrap up here the first segment so we'll be right back with more for this when we come back we'll talk about dogs and periodontal disease and we'll talk about how you can help avoid that we'll talk about the sheltie which is the breed of the week and royal canin it's all coming up here on the Positively Petland Show, up next on KXIC. Okay. You like my what? The laser beam thing. <laughs> I, gotta, I don't know how to do it yet, but we'll come out with something. All right. In three, two, one. KXIC Morning Host Jay Capron here with Ron Salter from Petland of Iowa City. What are we going to talk about this week, Ron? We're going to talk about the Sheltie. And no, Jay, they didn't use a laser ring to shrink the collie down. <laughs> Jay, where are you come from? We're going to talk about the Sheltie, the Shetland Sheepdog. We're going to talk about periodontal disease. Hey, I don't mean to shock you, but your dog or cat probably has it. But we're going to talk about how easy it is to prevent it and cure it. And then finally, we're going to talk about Royal Canin, which actually has kibble shapes to do exactly the same thing, prevent periodontal disease it's the positively petland show nine o'clock on sunday mornings on kxic or whenever you want at kxic.com on our podcast page It's called an Ushanka, the hat that I was looking to uh, tell you about. A Russian fur cap with the ear flaps. Ushanka. That's what it's called. And that's what big voice guys wear. Welcome back. It's the Positive Petland Show, 800 Kicks I See. And we told you about a retiree that was saved from a ice hole in Russia, thanks to this little dog who was able to help him out. And now we f- surge ahead and we talk about a dog that is little now because it was hit with a shrink ray, a collie with a shrink ray that was hit by a Martian shrink ray and turned into a collie. That's how it happened, right? Dude, the big voice guy. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> that is not the way. Are you sure it's not? It's Hawk Harrelson. No, no that's not the way it happened. huh? No. And, you know, I think a lot of people do think that the, it is a shrunk down version of a collie. And in some respects, there are some connections there. The collie definitely is is a 
Lassie, the larger uh, uh, version and everything. And they did use other breeds. And the Collie was somewhat in the mix of the Sheltie. Um, so it, there are some, that's why we see those similarities there. Um, the, the, the documentation on the past of the Shetland Sheepdog, the smaller version, is not really well documented. I think we definitely know where it comes from. And Jay, where do you think they come from? The Shetland Sheepdog? Comes from uh, what islands? And islands, huh? Greek, Greek islands. No, it's actually a lot more obvious than that. I don't know. The Shetland. Oh, Shetland Island. <laughs> don't. <laughs> don't. That was easy. Okay. All right. So uh, where are those at? Where, where, yeah, <laughs> where um, are the shell and I? Yeah, I think they're in the ocean somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Very well played. Very well played. All right, I will tell you where the Shetland Islands are because I have the go I have the Google right now. I have Google here. Uh, Scotland, is that right? Let's see, Shetland Islands, uh, also known, yeah, the Shetland Islands, uh, off of Scotland and northeast of the Isle of Great Britain. Okay, and then and that plays into the the what they think they know of is the past of the the Shetland sheepdog is uh, from small spaniel type dogs, Scandinavian spitz type dogs, and other small sheepdogs from Scotland. So that's that's that general area. Gosh, you know, people got around a lot back then. It's, <laughs> I'm always amazed on that one. Um, they had nicknames on the Shetland Island and probably still do to this day as the Lilliputian Collie, hmm. which is like, you know, little Collie, and then Fairy Dogs, which is kind of just a cute little fun name for them as well. So uh, another thing about the Shetland Islands, I thought this was just interesting because it kind of just is America sounding in that they developed this breed and found out that they would sell them to the summer visitors from the mainland who were attracted to the small size dog that resembled the collie but you know it's just kind of you know hey hey this is pretty popular you know <laughs> let's make some more of those you know kind of a thing so it's kind of an interesting past on those uh early 1900s is when they started going to england and migrating over to uh into the united states because of some of the mixing that occurred during that time if you 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 will see some differences in the Shetland sheep dogs that we have here in America uh, compared to what you would see in the Shetland Islands. And so you do, the official name is American Shetland Sheepdog. Oh, okay. So, so that is a little bit there. Uh, top ranked in obedience and agility if you're into the competition. So you know, this, I think I have seen Shetland now that I think about it, that do like the the, the the little bob and weave thing. Yeah, yeah. the bob and weave, the jumping, yep. and all that stuff. So they're real good with that. They actually they talk about history on it where they didn't quite have that temperament down. Oh, I think it was 50 or more years ago. And so the breeders actually worked on how can I get a more consistent temperament out of my dogs, you know, hmm. kind of a thing. So that was interesting. Um, a little bit about their form and function. The Sheltie was used to drive the small sheep into enclosures when needed and also to drive them out of the residence vegetable gardens and to protect the young lambs from birds of prey Ooh. by barking and leaping. And so that was their form and function back then. Um, uh, they definitely are a herding dog, uh, which means they like cars. <laughs> and so they tend to be that dog that chases the cars, you know, around in vehicles and, and uh, along the fences and all that kind They've of. Got that instinct, huh? Yeah, I'm trying yeah. to herd up the cars. <laughs> hey, get over here! <laughs> Park over here. Um, Shelties enjoy and excel in many events, including obedience, agility, herding, and tracking, as well as therapy work. Oh, that's nice. So, and then a little bit about, you know, just the, you know, what is that like to have a Sheltie? It is a non, or it is not a, it is a shedding dog. It actually has a double coat. So you're, you are, even though this is a smaller breed, you're going to see that shed around your house. Uh, with the Sheltie. So, and this is one of those where the Furminator will definitely help you out with it. Um, Go into the groomer and, and getting trims and stuff like mm -hmm. that will help. They don't recommend shaving it down to the skin uh, because it was designed to have that longer fur, uh, but they don't talk about just getting in a good trim in the summer months 
probably to give it a little cooling aspect mm-hmm. to that point. But they just caution, no, don't go down too deep because that protects them from sunburns and things like that. And there is a little bit of that controlling of temperature aspect about their fur, a lot like some other large uh, or long haired uh, type dogs. So shedding is definitely going on here. It is a smaller dog. Realize that we talked right now a lot about the uh, energy level of that dog through this discussion, the agility and all that kind of stuff. So there is energy in here. This would be a nice dog to go running with because it's not a large breed dog. So it's not like you have to go to the parks and really wear this guy out or throw that ball around every night to wear your dog out to give them the extra, that daily exercise they need. This one would be a good one when you're going for a run. Sheltie would get all the energy out that it needs. I don't know if it's a long distance dog or anything like that, um, but it would, for most of us, it would get a nice uh, exercise, even a nice long walk. The Sheltie would appreciate and be worn out and probably go to bed as soon as it went, you know, got back in the house and said, oh, well, I don't know if I could do that again. <laughs> and then wake up the next morning. Let's go. Let's, let's go, go again. Yeah. So, uh, and that's about the Sheltie. Okay. Good. Oh, that's good. And that's uh, the breed of the week. <laughs> Every week we feature a different breed. It's always interesting. Do you have a Sheltie? We yeah. have one or two Shelties. I can't right now. I can't remember if one of my Shelties went home. So we have them in the store. You can check them out. A real pretty uh, small breed. Yes, they are. Check it out. Petland of Iowa City, Lower Muscatine, across from the Iowa City. It is the Iowa City Marketplace, across from Lucky's and uh, the other stores out there. We are going to surge ahead now and talk about the periodontal disease, the other topic of the day here today. And uh, do you have the statistics? I know it's a lot. I know there's a lot of dogs that have at least the beginning stages of it. Yeah, and let's put cats in this because most of everything we're going to talk about apply both both the issues and then the solutions to both dogs and cats by the age of three most dogs and cats have evidence of periodontal disease so they're starting to you know get going and everything the real problem develops as the plaque and the uh, calcium starts spreading not only what you can see on the teeth. So this is just, you know, hey, you know, I see a little plaque buildup, uh, very much like what we get, but what do we do? We go to the dentist, they, what, what, what are they always doing? They're flaking that stuff off with those little picks and stuff. I don't quite know what they're doing in the mouth when they're doing it, but I know they're flicking around in there and rinsing and doing a lot of that kind of a thing. Um, what they're doing is, is getting those calcium deposits off. And why are they doing it? Because we can get this too, the periodontal disease. If those calcium deposits continue to build up, they will then slowly start spreading down under the gum line. And so once that occurs, now you're starting to get into serious stuff. And I do even remember at the dentist, um, I think they had a mirror or something, and I noticed that pick, they were going just underneath the gum line. I noticed that they would do that. So the same thing that occurs to us occurs to the dogs. Now, once that happens, now your bacteria starts accumulating in there. It's nice and warm. It's moist. It's protected. Uh, the toothbrush is, a, you know, for us, it's, it's harder for us to get rid of it and all that kind of stuff. So uh, prevention is all about it. Uh, the vehicle that causes the problem is is when the bacteria start accumulating in those deposits that are underneath the gum line our bodies start fighting them and we then get an excessive amount of white blood cells going uh, crazy in our mouths and that's when the problems start occurring and now you're getting into some techie stuff that are beyond my understanding but it all can lead to not only tooth decay tooth loss, uh, foul, foul breath, uh, but also to heart disease. And they're do- again, this is to us as well. So poor dental hygiene, you know, affects us in these ways too. So heart disease, liver issues, and all sorts of things throughout the body. So I wanted to point all of this out to say, hey, this is real serious stuff, not only for us, that's why we brush our teeth, uh, that's why we go to dentists, that's why we should be concerned about that even when, hey, I don't have any problem, I don't, my teeth don't hurt, and all that kind of stuff. Well, all of this can be happening, and uh, it's so easy to prevent and actually cheaply to prevent, uh, especially now for our dogs and cats, because there's some products out there that are great for preventive use. <clears throat> so how do we prevent it? How do we prevent that initial calcium buildup 
to or slow it down on on a dog the first thing is and we're going to go into this at the end of the show even more so but it's through what you're feeding and that is is hard kibble is your number one preventative hey i'm doing that woo woo run you know life is good well there's some other things that's not the only thing that you have to do because every dog is different just like every person is different as far as when they go to the dentist so that is your number one is a hard kibble so if you're feeding a lot of soft food like we used to do 40 years ago is all canned food and stuff like that um you're actually leaving your dog and cat open for more of the periodontal disease issues the calcium buildup like what we talked about and as it goes into the gum line um so hard kibble is it really important. I even know that the bigger the kibble, the better it's going to be for uh, reducing the amount of calcium buildup on those teeth. So I know we're all about small kibble for our dogs. Yeah, my dog really likes those small kibbles. It's because it's easier to chew. That's why they do. Well, that's why they like the smaller kibble. So if you can get them, you know, if you got that strong will, you can get them onto those larger kibbles. It's actually better. My small dogs are on a medium, so more of a large breed type kibble right now for this reason. I can go to a really tiny kibble, but I know for their teeth, it's better to have them on that bigger kibble. So that's number one. Um, number two is water additives. There are, water additives are great at prevention. So is the hard kibble, that's a preventative. So the, now the little water additives that you can put in the water, and we've got a variety of them uh, in our store. Uh, you put them in there and they create a uh, solution in the mouth that deters, not prevents totally, but it deters calcium buildup on those teeth. So it's a nice way long-term to lengthen out the time before between cleanings and stuff like that. A lot, you know, this is going down the, the line of brushing their teeth. Uh, there are, you can brush your teeth and we'll get into that in a little bit. But this is another way of doing it. What I love about the industry right now is, is there is the water additives that came out, oh gosh, within the last 10 years. And, you know, they work pretty good and all that kind of stuff. But now they're starting to put other stuff in them. And I think that's kind of hilarious and fun in that you can get uh, glucosamine and chondroitin in that solution hmm. so that your dog is getting you know, hip prevention or hip uh, 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 uh aches and pain prevention, which is a nice thing to have. Uh, they've got omega-3s and fatty acids in there, so that you're boosting those levels, so they're gonna have a healthier skin and coat. So there's these other things that they're putting in there to you know, put value added, I guess is what they would call that. Um, another thing that they just recently came out last year is the concentrated form of all these. Um, I, and when they did it, I said, gosh, it's genius, uh, because I have this cabinet where I have all my pet stuff in, and it's packed. Like I got not enough room in this cabinet. And, but I have this big bottle that I squirt a little bit in their bowl every time I fill it up. And all of a sudden that big bottle now is this tiny little squirt thing. And I, I, I equate it to, you know how you can get a bottle of water and they have those things where you squirt it into the top of the bottle to give it flavor and stuff. Mm. It's kind of the same approach where it's very concentrated. You just give a little squirt. Um, I've been using that now for I think six months. They, I know it's a tiny bottle and you go, oh, I'm going to go through it quicker. You don't. You, this things last forever. The little squirt that comes out, you know, it's pre-measured and all that kind of a thing. Man, that thing lasted for like three months, the little tiny bottle. So I said, that was a great deal, a great value, did what it's supposed to do and all that. It also freshens the breath. So uh, uh, that is an important thing. You know what? In fact, I think I forgot to go through the top four things that you're going to look for in your dog. So let's do a little back treading here. Um, does my dog have issues with periodontal disease? Uh, does your dog have stinky breath? This is a key early sign of periodontal disease. Does your precious pooch have red or swollen gums? And so if you see any kind of redness or swollenness in there, um, all these things actually apply to us as well. Um, so if you see any uh, uh, red or swollen gums, you've got signs, your dog or you have signs of periodontal disease. Uh, is your canine uh, companion teeth yellow or brown? What, what, do you, what would you call that? That's plaque buildup. And so there, there's signs. Um, losing or, or losing the loss of teeth or, or hey, it's missing, um, is another sign of periodontal disease. 
Um, what is your, how is your dog's appetite? Have you been noticing that your dog's appetite has been decreasing and decreasing and decreasing? It's probably because of pain and stuff that they're now experiencing because of periodontal disease. If you're seeing those uh, serious issues here, there, there's pictures of periodontal disease and they always show the worst case scenarios. You know, like, holy cow, did somebody not ever look at their dog ever? You know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, go to your veterinarian. Holy cow. Get, you know, if you have questions on this and you really want to do the right thing for your dog or cat, go to your veterinarian because they'll give you you know, they'll clean the teeth if need be to get them back to square one. Uh, Susie, our little troubled child, our little Maltese poodle, uh, went through that last year. <laughs> went to Dr. Ebert with plaque buildup. Uh, and now is like, when she smiles, she's got those really white teeth now. So she's real cute. Uh, so uh, definitely engage with your veterinarian. And that's what I'm using as a reference point here, uh, talking about what are the signs, what is periodontal disease and all that kind of a thing. So then we talked about going back to how do we prevent it uh, in our dogs and cats. Uh, we talked about hard kibble. We talked about water additives. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and now the uh, next thing then to go into is more of uh, some some uh, chews that they can do because we talked about uh, the hard kibble. There are some products out there that actually can help your dog. Same vehicle, you know, like chewing and all that kind of stuff, but they're more in the treat form. I bet you most of you know about the most recommended treat out there is, what do you think is the most recommended treat for dental and, and breath? The bone? This is, well, think of a brand. Yeah, uh, bone would be good. I'm not, yeah, that's a good greenies. one. Greenies. Greenies, yes. Mm -hmm. And probably everybody was shouting it out in their cars right now. Greenies, it's greenies. <laughs> um, most recommended by veterinarians uh, and is one of the uh, top, I think it is the top treat uh, to help your dog with uh, preventing plaque buildup, having fresh breath and preventing periodontal disease. So greenies is a great one. Uh, they, you'll notice that they have different sizes. Uh, they have them sized just right for your dog so that it's the right shape and size. So when they're chewing it, it they will move it around their mouth and actually help in doing that uh, in cleaning the teeth or, or preventing it. Um, you'll also, there's products in there that help the dog and prevent it from a uh, plaque buildup on there too. So it works in two different ways. One is it's just the chewing and raking off calcium bits, but it actually has additives in there to uh, remove a little bit that's on there. Greenies always ha uh, recommends one a day. Uh, and so, you, and they even suggest the seven day challenge. You know, see if you can uh, take away one of those indications of periodontal disease and mainly breath. If you can in seven days, uh, one of these every day, uh, go back to your dog and go, oh, hey, the bad breath is gone. You know you're going in the right direction. And so Greenies always talks about doing the seven-day challenge. Get the right size for them, and you'll be good there. The only uh, recommendation I have in addition to all of this for Greenies is those things are packed with high protein, which is a good thing. And I noticed with my own dog, I had to decrease the amount of kibble as a result. Little Callie was getting chubby. And so I said, oh, just decrease a little bit of the food and keep that in line. So just watch your, your dog or cat's weight uh, when feeding greenies because they are loaded with good proteins and stuff like that. So now we talked a lot about preventative type products. So we talked about water additives, kibble, treats that you can feed uh, to your dog. Now there are products out there that are restorative. Uh, in nature. So they will actually uh, work more on taking the plaque and everything off those teeth over a, a period of time. And it's usually about 30 days. And I've used these products on Susie. Uh, she got her first teeth cleaning when she was seven years old. And she, we identified that she had plaque buildup issues all the way from about a one-year-old uh, she was already you know, like you open the mouth and go, holy cow, you already got some tartar buildup in there. We also noticed the breath was a little nasty uh, in, in for Susie as well. And Callie, our dachshund, um, has, you know, the bad breath thing when you, you know, you, she comes over to you like, go, whoa, you need to do something about that. <clears throat> so 
we have them on all those preventatives and that pretty much takes care of Callie. Uh, we didn't, we don't need to go any further with her, but Susie still would get more plaque buildup. So we then uh, started feeding or, or using products that are restorative in nature. Um, there's gels out there that you can squirt between their jowls and their back teeth, right where the buildup uh, really occurs. And so you put you, you let them eat, you let them drink in the morning. I even uh, let them go out do their potty and all that kind of stuff. When they come back in, I put the water up for about 30 minutes and then I squirt the gel into their cheeks, or, you know, between their cheek and teeth. And then for 30 minutes, let them go, you know, do the thing. And they pretty much just look at you going, what did you just do? I don't even know, <laughs> you know, kind of a thing. And then they walk away. And uh, that then over a 30 day period, if you do that every, go through that routine every morning or every evening or whenever you do it, uh, that will slowly remove the calcium buildup. And so Tropiclean has a product out there. Um, also, Pets Life, and those are the two products that we ha have had in our store. Pets Life has been out for many years. Uh, they have theirs in a spray form. So you're going to lift up that jowl, you're going to spray those teeth, and you're done. You know, do it on both sides. Um, both of them will remove that plaque uh, over time without even brushing. But if you got a dog and Susie falls into this, you know, Susie's a trouble child. She always likes to do things extreme. <laughs> um, we actually, uh, if, you don't have to brush with either one of these products, but if it gets a little too uh, too much, then uh, we go in there with a toothbrush. So we squirt the gel in or we spray uh, Pets Life in there, and then I go at it, I spray it also on the toothbrush, and then I use a toothbrush and I go quickly mm -hmm. uh, in there. This is not something that you dawdle around with, like with our own teeth where, what does the dentist say, like a minute per side or 30 per seconds, 30 seconds per side or whatever. This is like, I don't know. I know for my dogs, they're pretty tolerant, but um, this one, it's get in and get out kind of a thing. And so, uh, however, you know, your veterinarian can help you with the toothbrush. We can actually help you with how do you I do this toothbrush thing? Because my dog goes crazy uh, with it. Um, but there are different toothbrushes out there that do different things. I really like the toothbrush that wraps around both sides of the teeth so that when you go in there, you don't have to go on both sides of the toothbrush. You just go down the entire length of the the teeth, uh, the line of teeth, and it gets both sides all in one thing. I do, you know, kind of swipe, 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 and then go to the other side, swipe, 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 up and down, uh, or upper and lower, and then I'm all done. So within about 20 seconds, I've brushed my dog's teeth, um, or for Susie, that is. But I use this Pets Life Oral Care or the Tropiclean Gel in addition, and it does a phenomenal job of taking that plaque off over a 30-day period. It also, if like if you go, oh, my dog doesn't have that plaque, but holy cow, the breath is just not good. Um, these two products work really, really good on that breath issue. Um, I had a long time ago when I realized how powerful the Pets Life product was, is a person came in with a Chihuahua. We were doing the $5 nail trim, but I heard my staff in the back laughing. And as the store owner, I want to know what the heck is going on. You know, I'm not like I'm all about having fun, but why are all my staff back there laughing and not out on the floor, you know, kind of a thing. And <laughs> so I went back there. What's going on? You know, kind of a thing. And they're laughing and they're saying, you got to come close to this chihuahua. All it takes is five feet. It's nasty. Mm -hmm. And the breath was that bad. And I went, okay, I go finish up the nail trim. Let's get back out there. I want to talk with the customer. And I introduced uh, the customer to the Pets Life Oral Care Spray. She bought it that day. She sprayed it when she got home. She called me. And if you, this customer, and she's self-admitted, she's one of those difficult customers, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and so she calls me in the morning and she goes, Ron, I don't have a complaint today. She goes, I just want to let you know that I sprayed this in his mouth last night. And even this morning, the breath is still gone. It's really good. He, she goes, that product really works well on breath. What she was helping her dog with was periodontal disease. And I did say, I go, hey, it was so bad. You, next time you go to your veterinarian, you might have them look at those teeth a little more in detail to see what's going on in there, just to make sure you don't have anything bad going on. Um, and you can get the corrective care right away. So 
the prod, these products work really well. We've got a lot of customers using them. We sell a lot every week. So we know we're getting those return customers on it. And it's a product that works. And one thing you can do is food. And we're out of time, <laughs> uh, just about out of time. So Royal Canin is one way that you can help out. Yes. So let's jump over. Royal Canin, I just wanted to only talk about their kibble shape. They look at a dog's side and, and cat. So they do this on both sides. Uh, not only their teeth shape and size, they look at the the tongue. How long is the tongue of the, the dog or cat? Um, they you go after texture. They have the texturometer uh, that they have that they, you know, that's their patented you know thing on how they go after the kibble and all that kind of stuff. So they uh, change the size, shape, texture, density, all of that based on the breed that they're making the food for. Now, I'm not even going into that. They also uh, put the formula for the food together specific for that uh, dog or cat. So this is just talking about the shape and texture of the kibble. Some things that, that they help with then is dental health. It's important for the cat's teeth uh, to penetrate in uh, into the kibble to get that brushing effect. Digestion. Uh, if you get little kibble, you actually, and they just gulp it up, they actually have problems with digestion at that point. So they're trying to slow some breeds down in how they're doing their the eating. Um, satisfaction. Some dogs and cats, you know, they, they actually like the, the, the different shape and it's a satisfaction for the dog or cat. And then palability. We all know that while we're eating our food, texture plays a big role part in whether we like it or not. We like the crunch or whatever, you know? And so they work with the palatability of the shape and size of that kibble. Also, how brittle is it or how soft is it? So I just found that just fascinating that Royal Canin goes that far into how that kibble is formed, shaped, texture, soft versus brittle, all these different things. So, yeah, they put a lot of thought into that. That's interesting. Just the actual uh, texture of the, the kibble itself, not even what's in it. And I know they put a lot of time and thought into how they're going to formulate the, the food too, but just the fact that they're talking about the shape and that's really interesting. We are out of time though. We ran up to the end here today, but it's been a lot of fun, Ron, as always. It's interesting to find out more about our dogs. Hopefully you help some people out, at least point them in the right direction, help them out with those stinky dogs. And you can, uh, if you have questions, bring your dog in. Of course, talk to your veterinarian, as we always say. Make sure that's number one. And uh, there's some products that can help you, though, Ron. It's been fun. We'll talk to you next time, okay? Thank you very much. Yep. Buy 10, get one free for their dog food, dog and cat food. So if you want to get that Royal Canin and try it out, hey, 10th one. The 11th one's free, right? And then buy. Uh, there's also $5 nail trims. Just bring your uh, distemper and rabies uh, proof. We are out of time. For Ron Salzer, I'm Jay Caper. This has been the Positive Pet Show. Bye.